why is it that human females go through menopause? Because I don't think that many other animals or most other animals do. Hardly any. Hardly any of those. I heard of one uh, one cetacean, some, in other words, some sort of a dolphin uh, goes through menopause. That's the only other species I've ever heard of. The, the theory is that uh, at some point a woman reaches a, an age that humans over time began to become more and more long lived. And uh, at a certain age, it's more, if a woman, if we live in social groups, we take care of the members of our group. Uh, and if the mother is taking care of her children and then her grandchildren, her bearing another child, there's the danger she'll die in childbirth uh, or that she'll die when that child is young. And so it actually is a, an economic sense that our genes making an economic like, you know, like Dawkins talked about in the selfish gene. It isn't like that our genes actually make decisions, but we can think of them as saying, click, now let's switch to this strategy where I, it's better off me being a grandmother than dying in childbirth or dying while I have a very young child. And, and so better yeah. to just invest. That's, I think, that's I think the reason that it, it's sort of unique to humans comes from because of our brains. Pregnancy is particularly dangerous for moms, right? Like head. labor, labor is dangerous. Um, mm -hmm. And also we just need a lot of like, or we benefit a lot from long-term social support um, more so than most other animals. So yeah, back, uh, we've talked about this, I think Dave, but Kim Hill also did some data where they actually, you know, Kim Hill and Hillary, Hillary, Hillary Kaplan, a number of people have, have analyzed things like the calories that are brought in by people over their lifespan in these kind of horticultural, you know, groups living sort of close to the ancestral circumstances, living in the jungles of South America. And they, one of the things that they tell me is that, uh, first of all, the average couple uh, doesn't really bring in enough calories to care for themselves and their children. They're so busy taking care of the kid, they can't bring enough calories. And so they need their relatives to help them out and their neighbors to help them out. Uh, and the average male doesn't bring in enough calories until he's like 20 years old to really, to be a guaranteed source of protein. And so, because we're so incredibly dependent in ways that most other animals were so incredibly dependent on that risk pool group that, you know, that that's what makes us the special species in which it pays for the female to, to stop reproducing because she's still in this group. She's still caring for, she's still sharing calories and time and resources on the, uh, on her, you know, second generation offspring. But she's no longer continuing to produce more mouths that need feeding. Right. Exactly. Right. And, and she's, yeah. And she's no longer, she's not taking the risk because if a woman has a kid three years before menopause, right. And she would have died three years later, that, that young three-year-old is going to be essentially helpless. Right. So, Right. So those younger kids, especially the more recent the kid was born compared to menopause, if if there was a risk of death, the better. Right. Does this Losing mean parent... does this mean that uh, menopause would have only emerged after a time when human females were growing up to be on average older than 40 years old or 45 years old or something like that would have to well, there would have to have been selection pressure operating at that age for it to because it's a universal feature of humans so there would have had to have been some s selection pressure i guess one other theory is there could have been a weird bottleneck where there was only a small number of human beings and there was a genetic switch and one of the females that the only one that survived that'd be the other possible theory and it was an accident uh oh that is cool but i, I guess yeah. that that could potentially explain a whole bunch of phenomenon that we can't really come up with an explanation for or that there's adaptive yeah. explanations that are sometimes contested but wasn't there right. a, there, was a, there was a period that we got to where there was less than ten thousand homo sapiens on the planet right and everybody was in indonesia or something 
I don't know that, but that that uh, that's interesting. If that were true, it would have led to a lot of bottlenecking and some. We might have some unique characteristics that we don't really have to have. I, I mean, it's also possible. I don't I don't know the like anthropological literature on this, but it's possible that say it was a mutation that worked in a small group and then it just sort of lived among humans until we got to the point where by and large women tend to live ah. past 40 then it suddenly becomes incredibly un- advantageous and then that's when it spreads right um, yes that's that's, that's when the, it sort of becomes yeah. that's a good point Dave. that's the way it works if, <laughs> right. if it had a cost you know then it would have been selected out at some point but mm. if it actually had an advantage you know that advantage could have could have been magnified it's like a latent benefit almost that sort of sat right. idling away and then becomes significantly more beneficial at some point and it it's the um the fortunate timing of both of those things coming right. together that you have the genetic mutation perhaps at a time when there's an explosion of that genetic mutation being advantageous yes. but i suppose that's what all mutations that's are that's, at, that's right? the name right. of the game random yeah. variation and selective retention that is evolution what's happening people if you enjoyed that then press here for the full unedited episode and don't forget to subscribe Peace.